Now, there's something I love about Crash Bandicoot. It's good story, the games are really good, and they're just childhood favourites. And even to this day, most people, if you come across and say, hey, do you still like Crash Bandicoot? They'll probably say yes if they know what it is already. So today, hopefully, this documentary will explain to you a timeline, the video games, and fan games, all about Crash Bandicoot. Here is the intro. So let's start off with explaining what is Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot was a is a character, is a character that was created by Naughty Dog back in the 1990s. Now this is when um, this is the gaming age of the PlayStation One, and they were going to release the first Crash game on the PlayStation One. This was going to be another rival mascot for um, Sony. It was, and it quite worked very well, it did. So now you know that, let's explain each video game one by one. With the first game of Crash Bandicoot setting a simple storyline, basically you just got free from Cortex and also Dr. Embryo, and now you have to go and find Torna going through different levels from being on an animal's back um, to punching through crates and also beating simple bosses and also most levels being hard with death roots and also um, these things that you have to find in hard ways. Levels are easy at the start but as all video games it gets harder and if you're lucky you will be able to complete it. Now this game also had some deleted levels and you're able to actually play them by, well, codes. One of the most popular ones being Stormy Ascent. Ash Bandicoot 2 was the second one, still made by Naughty Dog, released on the PlayStation 1, and nowadays um, released to the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 for the remastered one, but we'll talk about that in the next couple of clips. So, Crash Bandicoot 2 sets right after Crash Bandicoot 1 after being a year released after the first one. This one introduced most of the stuff from Crash 1 but made it even better. Torna was not in this as it was replaced by Coco as a Torna was a bit too inappropriate for kids at the time. Um, so, replaced by Coco. Now with this one it introduced more levels with ice levels and also more bosses, some returning bosses coming back for instance Dr. Cortex which he would be the main part of the Crash Bandicoot series being, ev being every single Crash game and also um, Whipperoo making a return but we may not see him once again till Team Racing. Now also this introduced some um, sky levels as soon as you get up to the hardest ones basically finish the levels and then you get to be Dr. Cortex and introduce much more mechanics to this. This was hard but it was challenging but it was a bit more easier with a nice save feature and most people like it but I find this game okay. Crash Bandicoot 3 was released after Crash Bandicoot 2, if you can see a pattern here, released to the PlayStation 1 and nowadays PlayStation 3 and also the PlayStation Vita. Oh, and did I mention that you're able to play PlayStation 1 games on your PlayStation 2? But to Crash 3, this introduced more new stuff into Wellex and also um, playing as Coco for some levels, mainly as uh, when you're defeating engine or when you're on an animal's back or other stuff. Um, it introduced some new stuff within this game as of a um, after you defeat a boss you get a um, 
Uh, I should know the name, I should, but you get a power up, you do. From fruit bazookas to the speeches, and speaking of speed, this game also introduced to us relics. You've got four types of relics, the lowest ones being the easy one, the one that's the platinum relics are the hardest ones and are actually easier to get in the end centricity. Why? Well, they tell you the times they do. Within this one, they do not tell you the times for for the basically for the you know the last one so this game was hard but it was, it was not as hard as of this was the first one i played and caddy played and much more so this game was good childhood memory but i don't think it will compare to anything else that we'll see on today's documentary straight after crush bandicoot 3 team racing was um Release. As of this would be the last time Naughty Dog will develop a Crash Bandicoot game. Now, um, being with this being a racing game, something different, um, we had some sort of like a bit of a tease of how a racing game would be in Crash 3 with the motorbike segments. But for now, on this one, it was racing. You're able to play as either good or bad within racing and to also unlock characters. And also this introduced, as, as you know, boss battles and also a new filler instead of being Cortex, which you can play as, this introduced Nitrous Oxide, who would appear in many other the Crush games but would finish on one of them. Now, even though many people still like Nitrous Oxide, some don't, but yeah, again, people like this one as of being the last good Naughty Dog game. Now, with this being a wasting game, it was quite good, I would say. I've played it a few times myself, and I, that's all I can really say about it. After Crash Bandicoot f um, um, Team Wasting, sorry. Um, after that, the worth of Cortex was hit. Now, first people wanted a new Crash Bandicoot game for the PlayStation 2, and they got it. This game was the one that was going to change everything, as of a Crash Bandicoot game can be on multiple consoles instead of being a PlayStation exclusive. Now, he it was originally like that with the first uh, four games created by Naughty Dog, but then everything changed, and I feel like it was better. Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex being kind of linking with Spyro um, the End of the Dragonfly. This game was released on the PlayStation 2, um, the Xbox, the GameCube, and probably another one but I have totally forgotten about it. So the Wrath of Cortex was basically going somehow I guess straight after Crash 3 meaning this game is Canada. Not many people like this. And so this game was hard, it introduced too many mechanics at once it did. The first boss battle I will agree I don't like it that much, but the rest of them are totally fine, even though not bringing anything new. I still actually quite liked the game, as of this is one of my childhood ones. And I end up actually completing the game, I would say twice in my childhood, and we're still going to try and do it on the Eddie's Games channel. But, um, like I said, not many people liked it. Um, I, I guess lack of originality and considering that of the response that that Spyro game got, people don't really like this. Just to mention that um, we're placing the old boss battles. Basically, um, the, the intro scene makes sense, it does. Because it kind of explains how Aku Aku is feeling basically annoyed at um, Dr. Cortex and the other villains from Crash 3. So they are in this game as of Cortex and Aku Aku being in the in the final boss battle with Crunch. Yeah. Crunch is introduced to the Crash Bandicoot timeline with the elementals also. Quite nice I would say as of Mark Hamill is voicing the fire one. So um, I guess that's good. And you're able to play Coco more like Crash Bandicoot but some stuff are off but Coco is a nice addition and it would be like a, an inspiration for Vicarious Visions and Activision to improve on Coco in the NSN game. Hey guys, sorry I'm having to do this, but this is going to be uh, part one of the documentary. Um, 
Well, am I going to be releasing part two anytime soon within uh, this week? No, I will be releasing part two next year so I can work on it a bit more. Um, the thing is, is that I've, I'm going back to college on Monday and I want to get some videos done. So unfortunately, most of the time of documentary and short films will be in the process, but if it takes this long, it's going to have to wait. Also, I've got a new game that I need to play, so um, yeah, so part two coming uh, September 9th, 2018. Thank you guys and sorry for this.